Dr. Gregory Landis is with us this morning, a uh, noted uh, cardiologist and on the other end of our line. Good morning to you, sir. On your boat, I would suspect, this morning. Yeah, you're quite right, Michael. Good morning to you. You're in the... Uh, talk to you from, I've talked to you from my beautiful uh, uh, Bossier and uh, Duncan Bay Boat Club in Sheboygan, Michigan. Yeah, another uh, was a pure Michigan weekend. You had fantastic weather, too, didn't you? It was it was unseasonably warm. We uh, ever, never, ever get a 90-degree day up here, but we had it over the 4th. It was just fabulous. So it's uh, even more painful to think about a man like Bob Probert at the age of 45 on his boat on Lake St. Clair enjoying a beautiful day with his family, suddenly having chest pains and um, collapsing. Uh, they rushed him to the hospital to no end. What do you think happened? Uh, it sounds like he had a, you know, a sudden heart attack. Um, usually it's caused from atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries, but uh, he did have a long history of cocaine abuse back in the 80s, maybe 90s, and had quite a bit of alcohol problems. As you know, he's always arrested for being in fights with the police as well as the hockey players on the ice. So mm-hmm. who knows? Uh, cocaine is a very, uh, very toxic substance to your coronary arteries. It can cause a severe spasm. So hopefully he wasn't still doing it. Is that, uh, is that sort of uh, event unusual where you, uh, you collapse and are never resuscitated? And it depends on which artery, if it's the, what we call the left main artery uh, that supplies the blood supply to the left pump or the left heart, which pumps all the blood to the rest of the body. If that goes down, you're down, and that's it. It happen that quick. Is there any way to see something like that coming? I mean, you wouldn't, sus- you wouldn't think at age 45 that would happen to a guy who was obviously a finely tuned athlete. Well, you know, if he kind of blows off the chest pains, uh, men are notorious to... Uh, I say, oh, it's just a little indigestion. You know, it'll, it'll get better. It's something I ate. Mm-hmm. Um, they ignore those uh, little warning signs uh, from doing any exertion or uh, after they eat a big meal or something like that. Then, yeah, they can have a, a sudden heart attack. Again, it depends on the location of the, uh, the blockage in the artery. So um, I ask again because uh, we all should, I guess, take note here. What are the signs we should look for? I mean, it, maybe Probert had some signs ahead of time, maybe not. But uh, what should we look for specifically, and then what should we do if we notice these uh, symptoms? Well, it's kind of combined. If you get a little chest pain with any kind of exertion, you know, even going up the stairs or let's say you're carrying a bunch of groceries in or you know, doing some lifting around the around your house, whatever, you know, some chest pains, that's that's warning sign number one. And if it goes on long enough, you may get some shortness of breath with that. In other words, if you feel like you just don't get your wind like you used to, it may be a sign that your heart's not pumping efficiently and can't keep up with your body demands for oxygen to the muscles. So those are probably two of the biggest ones. Um, if you have irregular heartbeat, if you take your pulse, you find a lot of beats are skipped. Uh, that's another the way to kind of check to see if things aren't working right in the old ticker. Um, when you say pain, <clears throat> when you when you say chest pains, what what sort of pains are they? Is it uh, is it a dull pain? Is it a sharp pain? Is it a quick pain, enduring pain? It's it's different for everybody. Um, yeah. Usually, it feels like a pressure. Uh, when we see people come into to the emergency room, they say it feels like an elephant sitting on my chest. Uh huh. Sometimes it goes up to the left side of your jaw <clears throat> or down your left arm, um, but not always. And sometimes it just radiates straight through your back, which could be a, another symptom like an aneurysm or something like that. But uh, yeah. chest pain uh, is variable from person to person. Again, uh, men kind of tend to blow it off. They just think it's something else and don't think about it as, as their heart causing a problem. Okay. And what are your um, what are what is your current title? What are your current credentials? Right now, I'm a I'm board certified cardiovascular surgeon. Uh, I've I'm just doing a uh, vein practice now called uh, Total Vein Care Clinic. Uh, we're seeing uh, patients with venous disease, and uh, I also have a med spa for the cosmetic side, which uh, my beautiful wife, Deborah, helps out on both sides. So that's what I'm doing now. What is the web address? Uh, <clears throat> you can get uh, our web address at landisvaincareclinic.com, um, and, uh, or you can just Google us. North 44 Med Spa is for the other uh, web address. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, letting us interrupt your time there in uh, Sheboygan on the boat. And uh, I'm sorry about the bad news, and we'll talk under happier circumstances soon. We will, and I hope to have you up here sometime. I hope to get there, too. That is a beautiful spot in Pure Michigan where Dr. Gregory Landis and his wife Deborah enjoy 
well, Lake Huron at its finest there. They're watching a beautiful sunrise. In fact, the sun's been up for a while now, and it's already very, very warm. Uh, things heated up, too, in the Republican Party. Ron Weiser, the chairman of the Michigan Republican Party, the ambassador, is uh, on the other end of our line. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Okay, I'm curious about all this uh, consternation. Uh, some people are very upset with the Republican National Committee Chair Michael Steele. What, some people are saying he should resign. What did he say, and why was it so offensive? And then we'll get to whether it's offensive to you. Well, I quite frankly uh, don't know exactly what he said because uh, this was based upon, as I understand it, uh, a bunch of some surreptitious people who were part of a listening to a, a private meeting and uh, who taped it and whether they paid the whole tape or not uh, probably we'll never know um, the uh, word that we understand is that uh, chairman Steele said that the afghanistan situation is quote a war of obama's choosing and he went on to say that it was not something the united states had actively prosecuted or wanted to engage in well, what did he mean by all of that this we were at war with afghanistan long before president obama was in office Quite frankly, I don't know. I mean, he was having a private conversation. Uh, somebody taped it. Uh, what he meant in that conversation, you'd have to hear the whole conversation and know what context, what, whatever his words were, were said in. And, and that's what uh, hasn't been made pro uh, public, and I guess only he and the people who were there will really uh, ever understand. Michael Steele has since tried to clarify his comments. He says he meant to say that Obama had shifted the war effort to Afghanistan. Here is the uh, voice of Senator John McCain, the one-time presidential candidate, Republican from Arizona, with his thoughts on the comments by the Republican Party chair. Chairman Steele sent me an email saying that he was, uh, his remarks were misconstrued. Mr. Steele is going to have to assess as to whether he can still lead the Republican Party as chairman of the Republican National Committee and make an appropriate decision. Uh, so far, we haven't heard any talk about Michael Steele uh, stepping down at all. Have, have you heard anything from the Republican National Committee? Uh, well, I'm part of the Republican National Committee, and uh, I've not received any emails from others. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I mean, this is internal business of the Re National Republican Party, and it doesn't have anything to do with uh, the issues that we face here in Michigan and uh, why the Michigan Party is focused on this election this fall, which is uh, changing the, the problems and, and the economic atmosphere and the, the business climate here in Michigan. I mean, we have jobs as an issue, and, and not what somebody st said in a private meeting as an issue. You will ad admit, won't you, though, that the, the Republican National Committee Chair Michael Steele has been a bit of a lightning rod since he's been in office. Well, I mean, he certainly has been, uh, he, he certainly has been uh, lively, and there have been a lot of things said in the press about him, but uh, he's our, he is our chairman and uh, will continue to be our chairman until uh, he is uh, replaced uh, in an, by an election, which is uh, part of democracy. So uh, just as we have a president, and he is our president and, and uh, will remain so until the next election. But uh, as I said, the, there's a tendency of the, of the press to focus on a word here or a word there instead of the big problems that are facing families, which... Uh, as you know, in this case, are, uh, uh, are huge problems when people don't have enough money to, to pay their rent or pay their mortgage or, or, have, or put food on the table. That's a much more serious problem than the, the comments of, uh, that are made privately by an individual. Okay, thank you very much. Ambassador Ron Weiser, chairman of the Michigan Republican Party at 18 after the hour. It's Michael Patrick.